I mean, the question, the, the really pertinent question about it all for me is what does it have to do? First of all, does do all the, these experiences of DMT and of other worlds and all this, do they really provide an opportunity for change? Are they really like a mo I mean, you were, you've questioned this too yourself. Like, are we just providing breaks for people to like have amnesia, you know, get really excited about some experience, but then go back to their normal lives? Or does it actually change someone for the better, hopefully? And, you know, I go back and forth on it even to this day. And then the second question is, you know, the second, qu the, qu the obvious question is why is DMT in the brain and in the body endogenous, endogenous? How do you say it? <laughs> endogenous. And, you know, why has it been used from throughout cultures throughout time? I mean, I guess, the, you know, so to me, it's just like, or my current thinking is, that it obviously has a, re a reason and a use in society and with the human mind, um, whatever the human mind is, whether the human mind is, is just m a singular, I'm just a node in a network, or if I am the whole network. I mean, that's what, how Thurman considers the, uh, the one in the matrix, because we are the whole mind, so when we, when we have ideas about uh, how thinking changes reality, sometimes that's occluded by our, our, our identification that we're just one person. But how we understand ourselves as the whole human being, the whole, all of humanity, is a whole different thing. But anyways. Well, the, and there's all these plants that we're using. And there's all the plants, so there's all, all of, Creation, all of, all of all of organic life and fish, but I think that we really need. I think we need teachers that we can trust. I think we need people out there that to help guide that are actually worthy of 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 teaching and also good guides to help us along the way. And I was always suspicious of of the ayahuasca s scene because I felt like, again, a little bit of like the Native Americans. Like in Taos, I felt like a lot of Native Americans uh, would get their identity, some of their identity off of Hollywood, like what, what they were expected, you know, how they were viewed. So in, in, a, in a situation like what goes on in South America where a lot of rich white people go down, spend money, f give it to somebody on, in an impoverished area. So people are willing to dance a little bit and do what needs to be done to get the money. You know, there's a set of, of, of preconceptions about what a shaman is and what that shaman provides and how that works. You know, whereas we read accounts where, you know, from 100 years ago or 200 years ago where people are going, where shamans are actually feared by the village you know they live on the outskirts and you only go to the shaman as a last resort and suddenly we have people going there and having this like idea of shamans as this sort of airbrushed healer that you know will come and make everything right and so i was always really suspicious of the socioeconomics of get you know dial a shaman and going to the shaman that, that does this for white people all the time. That said, I think that there's probably good people that are doing it, and, uh, but I haven't met them. But I think the world needs more of them because <laughs> it's a hard space to navigate and it provides a lot of room for self-aggrandizing, for various types of delusional psychoses and I mean it's all fun and good until people get hurt. <laughs>